Mm-hmm. Ryan O'Neill and his son Griffin the other day that uh, they had a fight again. I was just outside. I, I'm sorry to change the subject. I would. I was laughing so hard in Scott's studio just now. Sour Shoes was on speakerphone. Yeah. Me, Ronnie, and Scott listening to Sour Shoes do Pharrell. It is the best impression. Why really? doesn't he ever call in with that? I, I thought he did once. If you're listening to Sour Shoes, uh, call in and do what you were doing. It is the single best impression I've ever heard. I fell for it for one question, and he knows sports details. It's like it's. I was so why just, don't we have Sour Shoes sit in when Pharrell's not here? I, you know what? You might listen Could when you he hear really the, do that. When you, he do something when you hear this impression, wait, it's like four it's like hours. Sure Brian, do it. It's like Brian Dupree doing Sinatra. <laughs> then why hasn't he gotten another kind of job? It's amazing how Sour Shoes like that's his talent. He can imitate Pharrell. Well, listen. You know what? Uh, I guess he does other voices too. But that is extraordinary. Yeah. We were just off. <laughs> I'll ever. put I'll put him up if uh, he calls in. All right. All right. Well, anyway, uh, Ryan O'Neill and Griffin, uh, they're not satisfied with just, you know, having had uh, Ryan arrested and possibly facing charges. Now the lawyers are squaring off against each other. Uh, they are going to take this to, I guess, a legal level at some point. His son is trying to sue him? Well, I just, he's gotten himself a lawyer, uh, Gloria Allred, and she, you know, because Ryan is claiming he was doing this uh, shooting in self-defense. But Griffin got Gloria Allred as his lawyer. And she says that Ryan is... Um, they're rejecting Ryan O'Neill's claim of self-defense. Number seven. Oh, my God. Imagine this. That poor bastard Ryan O'Neill. Sons are now like... He's got to sit there and shoot him and stuff. <laughs> and then they sue him. Motherfucker. What is that about? Come I don't on. know that there's so he just got himself a lawyer and I don't know why else he'd need one. And we vigorously reject any assertion that the injuries suffered by Joanna and Griffin were as a result of Ryan O'Neill's acting in self defense. I understand that uh Griffin's pregnant girlfriend did have a bruised eye, but uh I don't know what went on there. Here's uh, Ryan's attorney. Why did they leave him alone? Mark Worksman, who says it was a warning shot. Number eight. <laughs> it's like the Wild West over at <laughs> that Ryan O'Neill house. The ranch Ryan He's crazy. The kids are crazy. <laughs> Griffin O'Neill pursued him, and Ryan O'Neill fired a shot. If that was my kid, I'd be like, can you just get out of my life? <laughs> Really, I mean, this, this is insane. What a family, man. In warning, not in anger. <laughs> I think it's very funny. I'm reading Liz Smith's column today, and she is suggesting counseling. <laughs> you think? Thank you, you think Liz. That'll work. <laughs> counseling. She's brilliant. Yes, she she thinks that maybe that could help. Maybe that'll be the answer. That was like Ralph exposing there was racism in the 40s. <laughs> <laughs> Extra special correspondents Beth Ostrowski and Katie Lee Joel are going behind the scenes today at the St. Jude's Fashion Show for a segment that will be aired tonight on Extra. Oh, is that right? Yeah, I just see this in the paper. Are they? Yeah, she was out last night again with that fashion show stuff and... She's been all over the gossip columns, actually, at shows. I know, because she works for Extra, and she likes going to these shows, so it kind of works out beautifully. And then uh, uh, she gets to sit up front and watch all the you know, the, the models wear the clothes, and she loves to see all the different fashions. Right. So she was in one yesterday. She came home. She looked... Now, I think Beth is one of the most beautiful women in the world, to me. Right. And, uh, you know, 
they dolled her up and put like glitter on her face and yellow eye makeup. She looks so ridiculous. She even said to me, "Do you? They they made me look so ugly." Why? Who did that? I don't know, but I said to her, "What the hell is that?" They try to make it look slutty or something. I don't know what they were doing, but they, it was just really but weird. But who was responsible for the makeup? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. She's running around with these shows. Can I ask you something? What is uh? Because on the plane, when I saw that Prada movie, I heard this too, and then I seen the, I tried to read these fucking articles. What is couture? Co co couture. 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 It's what like, is that? It's like real high, high end, end fashion, fashion. Yeah. like expensive high end couture. They call they call it like couture is uh, not a name of a guy. No. no. Oh, that's no. Not, it's, it's not like, like the whole says, brand of fashion. I dated, oh, it is. I dated this. I didn't date her. I, we, she blew me, but she said to me once. <laughs> she, she, and she's pretty While famous. While she was blowing you? No, no, she was and, pretty and famous. pretty famous. <laughs> pretty famous, and she goes yeah, to me. Can't wait to fucking see this. I'm coming to New York. Oh, oh, oh. She goes, I'm coming to New York uh, because I only wear high couture. And I was no. like, oh, let me look that up in the dictionary. I uh, What's I, that? I, I, I That movie, uh, so the fucking bitchy uh, first assistant says to her, I get to go to Paris, I get to wear couture or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, what does that mean? And I, I, I said, I never heard of a designer. I'm like, I know Gucci and other shit. I bet you like that movie. And then, uh, no, I, I told yeah, you. I, I admit it, I liked it. Yeah. And uh, and then I see it in the thing, so finally I'm going to say, fuck it, I, I might sound stupid, but what is couture? So it's just a type of clothes? It's uh, the, the, the highest end. It's either, you it's know... It's a jacket like that when, got ripped. Couture. <laughs> Feline. Feline. It's like a fee you pay so you get in line for it. Yeah, they don't make very many of those. It's not uh, uh, ready to wear, you know, like you go into blues oh, and you go right. to a rack. It's right. something that's way overpriced. Let's go to uh, Pharrell, who wants to say hello. Hello, Pharrell. Hey, bro, what's going on, dude? Hey. I just got to tell you, we were just talking over the sky. And it's ten years ago this month, your private parts, commercials airing nationally in front of a Super Bowl audience all over the country. It was a pariah then. It's a pariah now, dude. How are you, buddy? Hey, good. So uh, you're doing your show tonight, right? And uh, is 38C with you? Yeah, she's right here. She's holding Gunner, actually. Hey, Gunner, let mommy go. <laughs> hey, yeah. yeah, she's right here, dude. She looks hot. By the way, latest Pharrella poll tonight on the show, which newscaster was boning Howard Stern during that one-and-a-half-year hiatus? Was it Liz Joe? Was it uh, Applegate? Who knows? Yeah, so, yes, and I will be back at phone calls. But, uh, yeah, so what's going on? Hey, by the way, I, someone handed me a note and said that uh, Sour Shoes did sit in for Pharrella, but it didn't work. Well, that's what I was saying. Yeah. If he could hold a job, he'd have one. Yeah, it's true. No, it didn't work. Dude, the kid was probably uh, nervous <laughs> out of his mind, and his dad and mom kept picking up on the other end. Is that what phone. happened? Your, mo your mom's picking up right now? She was a hello. <laughs> <laughs> for real, for, the by the way, Sour Shoes is hosting a Valentine's Day special this Monday on Channel 101, 101. Oh, well, Pharrell, what uh, yeah. were you telling me earlier about the Yankees and, and Brian Cashman and some pickups? Yeah, Dude, he is a fucking genius. I love him, dude. He just made two more acquisitions in the offseason. You know, eight days for pitches and catches. We're going to be talking to John Sterling later. <laughs> and uh, we're going to get his thoughts on what's Brian Cashman doing. He picks up two utility infielders. The pitching staff he holds. Five bad rotation going strong after losing Randy Johnson. <laughs> I gotta tell you, they may want to run away with this heat again this year. And why not? I mean, losing World Series, that's not a big deal. Winning the AL heat like they've done the last 8 to 11 straight years. So. Hey, but wait a second. Uh, Pharrell, let me ask you this. With the Super Bowl, I understand you, in fact, were right. You picked the right team to win. Yeah, I picked the Dolphs. I mean, I saw it coming from that early December. Do you remember when they lost three straight? Yes. And I was going on a weekend binge. I mean, Saban was calling me. Kaplan was calling me. He's saying, yeah, what are you giving me the wrong pick? I go 24-0 and the first week of December. Since then, the Dolphs ran the table, dude, just like I said they would. I had TL on with me, my pop, and I tell you something. I stood true. I freaking had the seven point I covered. <laughs> and I got to tell you, when they put up that last touchdown in the final quarter, dude, I was. I, had 30 I love when you talk sports. That's exactly, that's exactly what he talks like. Did you hear Nancy Sinatra was on with us? She, uh, you a Sinatra uh, fan? That. You like her? Oh, she, she was, I think she was. I remember about 11 years ago at the fan looking at that subscription of her and Playboy, dude. And it took me about 35 seconds, dude. I was already <laughs> all over the place. And I got to tell you something, man. She looks. 
And gee, I've heard she looked hot right now. I didn't talk to Will Murray, but he was telling me she was pretty hot in there. That would be great. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, her good. I mean, any other any other jockey. I mean, that's what makes this such a pariah with you, dude. What you're doing. Anybody else uh, would have been bored the audience, but you made it great, dude. Well, that is an incredible impression. That's unbelievable. Sour shoes. That's a good one. I got to say. <laughs> Guys are telling me he does a pretty good Captain Jags, too. Do you? Hey, good morning, Howard. I just have to tell you something. Earlier this week, during that gas, uh, that gas stash, that, uh, there was about a 25-car pileup outside my gas station. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the same. It's the right case. It's not no. totally there. The Pharrell thing is you can't follow Pharrell with the Jags. You can't. Yeah, yeah, it's too hard. I'm, I'm working on my Artie, too. Hey, wait a second. That is pretty good. Well, you know, what's the difference between root beer and birch beer, you know? <laughs> That's not I, bad. It's not bad. When Norm and I were in L.A., real quick story, uh, <laughs> during your private parts premiere... <laughs> All right, stick with Pharrell. I like that one. Uh, you know, it, yeah, I will. You That's one of the better ones of me I've heard. All right, Sour well, Shoes. Thank you. That's Sour yeah, Shoes. And Sour Shoes... Uh, by the way, Sour Shoes does admit it is really hard to talk like Pharrell for a long time. I mean, it's got it, burn, it burns your throat out, right? It, it, it's like a, yeah, it's like a mix between uh, Wolfman Jack and Harvey Fire Queen. That's why Fire Queen drinks all that throat yogurt. <laughs> Shake it up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks, Sour Shoes. What a tribute to Pharrell. He's got to be thrilled. Uh, uh, and Sour Shoes, as I mentioned, will be hosting a show. I did not know this. But he will be hosting a show on Howard 101 on Valentine's Day. Well, he should do the hour like Pharrell. I'd listen. Uh, Robin, what else? Actor Daniel Baldwin, we were talking about him yesterday. There was a warrant issued for his arrest. He is now calling that warrant erroneous <laughs> and a mistake. What a life this guy's having. This is his life. He sent a voice message to the Detroit Free Press. The hell is he so depressed about? He said... It isn't true. I'm sober today, and I'm working real hard on my career and becoming a productive member of society. So there you go. <laughs> He's working on it. Maybe one percent of society are productive members of it. <laughs> but he he's working <laughs> toward it. He ain't in it. It's taken him a long time. Uh, you know how everybody's debating whether gay people should be allowed to get married? Not me. Not me. I think they should be married. <laughs> Well, that's your <laughs> side of the debate. No debate. That's your side of the Anybody debate. Anybody who's a human being would, wouldn't care. Well, the gays are striking back. Gay rights activists in Washington State have filed an initiative that would require married couples have children. That's right. That's, that's, that's right. That's what they're saying marriage is for? Then everybody who's married should be having children. That's right. If you don't have children, you can't be married. Whew, I'm all for that. <laughs> it's called Initiative 957. It would require couples to file a proof of procreation within three years of marriage, or the marriage would be annulled. Excellent. In addition, the initiative would make it a criminal act for anyone in an unrecognized marriage to uh, get marriage benefits. So there you go. They're striking back. They can't get married. Let's put some pressure on the people who can. Right. Good. I like that. New numbers uh, from the Transportation Department show that passengers on U.S. airlines report more than 4 million mishandled bags last year. I believe that. I told you, I went to Spain on an American Air carrier this past Christmas, and my bag didn't come out. <laughs> So there I was, stuck in Barcelona with no clothing, oh, no is that makeup, the no worst? toilet oh, paper, that See, that, that's the worst, because you're going on your vacation, yeah. you're going to a foreign country, and now you have nothing. Nothing. Oh, and I spent know. the whole day trying to replace things or find clothing. What is it, so people just don't go. care? Is that the problem? I don't know why it is, but like I said, the numbers are going up. Finally, they returned my bag to me at 10 o'clock that evening, but one end was ripped off. So I don't know. It must have been stuck under something, and when they unstuck it, it ripped the whole bag apart. That's anyway. happened to me maybe three times. And when you're that last person, that's too much. Last person in the bag. The hand. bag ain't coming. Oh. I, I, oh, stay the fuck away from me. God forbid I have a gun at that moment. <laughs> right. and if, well, it was in your bag. <laughs> and if the airline employee helping you isn't doing a cartwheel to help you, you oh, want to yeah. strangle them. And they, they don't. They have looks of like, what do you want? Or what do you want? Yeah, you're bothering them by yeah. telling them your bag is missing.
Overall, consumer complaints were also up, although the financial performance of major carriers did improve. The new numbers show domestic carriers flew more than 600 million passengers who checked luggage in 2006 and found that more than 4 million bags were lost, damaged, or put on the wrong plane. That is too high of a percentage. 4 million. It looks like the smell that women prefer in a man is... Not their farts. Is it uh, <laughs> P. Diddy perfume? <laughs> Not P. Diddy perfume. Which I own. You do? That's right. How about the uh, Yves Saint Laurent? Couture? Does money, You're going to be shocked. Does money have a smell? Wait. Yes, it does. Well, that's the smell. That is not it either. Absolutely. I think it's sweat. It is. You know why? 100% right. I read a, a magazine once that said that when dudes sweat, it sets off some sort of chemical oh, thing please. in some broads that they want to bang. It's really? It's yeah. absolutely right. true. What? If that were true, women would be swarming around Benji yeah, like flies. <laughs> yeah. I know it turns guys off, Swap, because Fred can hardly sit there, Benji. I know. He's constantly when moving he, that chair He's got away. that day when he wakes up late and he runs in here and, awful. He's, and he insists on wearing that little watch cap yeah. while he's dripping like a, you know, a <laughs> candle. Dripping wet. And then, oh, oh God, and oh. I hope this has changed, but he used to do the most grotesque thing at K-Rock. Ring out his nose? No, no, no. Oh. He, would, he would walk on like an August day, come in <laughs> completely blotchy and soaking wet right. and there's no tissues or anything so to he'd blotch himself down he'd take a piece of paper and just and paper wipe his face with paper and then oh. put the pa and then put the oh. paper down next to me See, Fred, and now I, the whole time i'm thinking of right. this sweaty piece of paper mm -hmm. and it grinding up against his face like in the most uncomfortable oh, it's thing terrible. and you, you see fred i built the studio so i don't have to see and Benji. he gets mad when we bring this up but he doesn't realize how offensive it is, is. it is it's to offensive people that, that well, you're well, working with i built the studio i so i'm unaware of all this i don't i forget yeah, i can't see him at all you sit like four inches away oh, from the guy I, I get to see him melt there's times where me and Fred, why do you wear me and Fred make eye contact. <laughs> I don't get it. Why do you wear a wool cap? And there's in some here? days when he's wearing like the fucking coat too, like he's gonna flash somebody. It hey, looks, you, it looks, makes me look better. You think? Yeah. Damn, but I mean, dude, inside you're sweating and I mean, you're under cap on. Look, you're under TV light. Sweat on me right now. Not right. You, no, right now. It's sort of, you're sort of moist. No, I'm not. Yeah. You get no, like, damp. All right, listen, <laughs> dude, what do you think that red is? I, I love you, but I, I just those. You admit that you used to wipe your face with pieces of those joke papers you write on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, isn't it, that gross? Do you, do you feel? Ooh, I at rub all? paper on my face. But do you what, feel, what is a napkin but made it's of? It's not absorbent. You know what I'm talking about, man. Does that feel at all refreshing? It makes me feel gross. It's not a, it's not a soft, you know, piece of linen. It's, it's a thick piece of paper. It's like, like if I had a towel, I'd use a towel. Well, vile. You, you think after the tenth time you put a towel back here, some sort of right. enormous sweat rag, or wipe <laughs> with your hat. <laughs> it's like you ever run out of toilet paper and you just have to make do. Ugh. I'm almost afraid. Well, okay. Ask. First of all, I don't do that sitting two feet from someone I work with. I just look at Benji's headphones and it says Benji Bronk on it. My my hey, my name is misspelled on my headphones. I have a great name. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Put, I put up Howard Stern against it. <laughs> well, Benjamin Bronk. In spite of the evidence that Benji. <laughs> is uh, submitting to the contrary. <laughs> Researchers are concluding that women who sniffed a chemical found in male sweat experienced an elevated hormone level. Yeah, they like yeah. it when Derek Jeter's sweating. Yeah, right. or Brad Pitt. Yeah, Along right. with higher sexual arousal and a faster heart rate. Brad Pitt could shit on a, on a shingle. <laughs> yeah, and be more yeah I mean, I, if that was true, every time I, had, I was bombing at a gig, I'd be getting laid up, the boom throwing themselves at me because I'm sweating. Previous research established that a whiff of it affected women's mood, sexual and uh, physiological arousal, and brain activation. Its impact on hormones, however, was less clear. Now they have uh, scientific evidence that even hormones are released when women smell men's sweat. <laughs> Does other times Benji will be trying to open a sandwich and write jokes with his other hand? <laughs> That just happened. He's juggling the sandwich. <laughs> and like there's food on his lips, and he's trying to open the sandwich and write a joke while chewing. <laughs> it's like, dude, you're kidding. You're, 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 you're doing what you make a living at. You well, can't you know, put the sandwich down long I wanted to keep Benji out of the studio, and he could have written from another room. Yeah. Nah, you and need him here. From a distant location. What do you mean you need him here? What do you yeah, need him here? I like, I like him overall. I'm just, I'm bitching about you. Sit next to a guy for six years, you're going to bitch about certain things.
and things. Well, can we? I mean, I would love to see this stuff. Is there a Benji cam? She and might that's have the problem. Him. I've she sit to Howard with you TV. One day you can watch him sweat. I sit to Howard TV, or even if even if Howard TV doesn't want to run it on the website, just have like a, a Fred cam or a Benji yeah. cam, uh-huh. and just you, it should be up there. The whole show, you just watch Benji. Right. That'd be funny. On the internet. I'd watch that. Yeah, on, yeah. on HowardStern.com. Uh, that'd be great, yeah. Just uh, no camera on us, because that's for Howard TV. Just on Benji. You know, a silent camera. See, we're missing all of that great entertainment Benji's providing. Because I'm looking at that right now, and I'm telling you, I'm riveted. <laughs> I'll tell you what. You, I'll tell you why you can't do it with him. You're riveted on the screen, but when you're sitting there watching I, I guarantee you there'll be millions of people oh, watching but him every morning. stick it up. No, yeah, but you no, can't tell him it's quick, happening. Quick look right now, just for the hell of it. Mm-hmm. I haven't changed a thing right. in the last few minutes. Look at it, both our desks. <laughs> Which one would you be like, God, this is really disgusting. No, I don't all, know. First of all, I know. I, look, look, I'm not saying I'm not gross. Rags surrounding you already. Fred, do I ever come in sweating and blotchy and, and grotesque? I've no. never seen that. Well, okay, I'm not Benji saying... Benji doesn't understand never, what you're talking about. I've got to wrap this up. It's, 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 on Artie's worst day, <laughs> he's never been even what you are. Sometimes on your best day, it's well it's well documented that I eat like shit. I get it, and it's it's here. But you know, you're sweating. I'm not sweating. And no, wiping you it sweat. With the you're wrong wet. Thing. You're wet all the time, and sometimes, and that's how, that's what that rash is all yeah, over your chest. No, it's obviously. not. It's really what happens. It's a big is, jungle of berries and hair. I don't have any berries on my chest. Pull that, pull up your shirt again. Let's take. A, let's get a close up. <laughs> Gary was right. It what looked is like that? He had it's extra just nipples. there's no berries there, dude. dude. Are you serious? What is that? It's, it's like, red. Is that it's, like psoriasis? It's redder. But it's not berries. Look at that hair. Oh. What is that, Robin? Eczema? Or? How do broads fuck any guy? How do you guys do it, Robin? How in the fuck take a gorilla. Do you do? It's not. Uh, yeah. Between his tits are these big, giant, like, pimply things. Yeah, he's got it's p- not pimple. It looks like pimple. No, it, no, it doesn't, Robin. It lo- I'm looking at it. It looks like it's, pimples It's red. From it's here. completely flat. Pick up flat. your shirt. Pick up your shirt. Here, no. I'll show you what I'm talking uh, about. Pick it up. Pick up your whole Take shirt. You just want to see my... Yeah, I do. Yeah, I'm, up, I'm gay and I want to look at you. Pick no, up your... no, I mean, it's like embarrassing nice in my belly, but... Just, just pick it up. Pick you up your to... couture. <laughs> look, right there. What's that? What's that? <laughs> there's that fat... There's that fat underneath his underarms that make oh. him just like... Oh, <laughs> covering up his middle section. Dude. You know what it looks like? It looks like someone put like a tie cord on, on underneath his tits and just like... It's completely on. flat right here. No. Oh, oh God! Oh, but it's raised. No. Wow. <laughs> Lift up your coiling. arms, man. Look under your arms. Isn't there too. something under his armpits? A bench you doing? Don't get, get fucking pants. naked. Come on. Oh, Just lift God. up your arms. Lift up your arms. Oh, look, look at it. It's all right rashy. There. Wait, wait. Right there. Keep it up. Keep up your right arms. There. What's going on under right there? there? What are you oh, doing? Well, now he's naked. Oh, my God. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Those That's balls. it. Show him naked in here. Show him <laughs> Oh, man. Dude. Dude. I'd rather have Ron Jeremy and Cabby naked. Yeah, he's all naked. His ass is oh, all over the place. You know what? For the first time, I'll say one thing. Benji does have nice eyes compared to the rest of the <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fuck. I'm never going back there. Ooh, dude. Again. Come on. Go on with the news. Is your he's ass sit clean? There naked. It's the naked news. Well, listen, I have a lot of flesh on my ass covering everything up, so you don't have to worry about it. He's completely nude. Sitting uh, on a chair. All right, no, I, let's, let's just get through the rest of the show, because I, I, I'm not going to deal with this. I'm turning off his mic. I don't think uh, I can do it. No, oh, look at it. Oh. <laughs> go sit on the couch. Go look to the couch, fucking, Artie. Your fucking equipment is all jungled up now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh. oh. Artie, you talk to him. I don't want to say to him. All right, all right listen, i got to end this. Uh, so let Robin do her news, Anna please. Nicole Smith has no. two weeks to get a DNA test performed on her daughter. Well, it's about time. Let's find out whose kid this is. That's the word from a Los Angeles uh. judge. I guarantee it's the uh, the guy who's claiming it's his kid. E Online reports that the former Playboy playmate must have the procedure done by February 21st, or she'll be forced to return to court to explain the delay. Photographer Larry Burkhead filed the paternity suit against Smith in October. He claims he's the real father of Anna Nicole's five-year-old darling, uh, Dan Daniel Lynn. Named after her dead son. Why would However, you? What's the matter? Look at I can't work with that face. I can't. It's Robin. It's not me. Look at him. What face would you have on exactly? <laughs> yeah. I've got a shot of his tits morphing into his stomach. It is, it is, oh, my God. Will you guys stop? Holy Balls shit. are all Put your clothes on, Benji. 
Yeah, that ain't right in the workplace. You, you can get sued. Yeah, that's against the law or something. There's a woman here. Look at the pimples on his chest. It's not pimples. It, it really it's is. It's something. Size of your tits. This is when this is when you need Chiasano to come in with that look he used to give when Benji. <laughs> this is not appropriate in the workplace. Look at his titties. Oh. Oh, I got goodness. nice broad shoulders. All right, any, anything nice else? Nice round shoulders. Yes. Yes. I said. Uh, Please let me just get this. Anna done. Nicole <laughs> is uh, saying that the baby belongs to her significant other, Howard K. Stern. Uh, and she has been trying to block these efforts to get her to uh, give a blood test. If you knocked up Anna Nicole Smith, DNA. why is this other guy, this Larry Birchhead, why does he even care? Like, I'd be like, thank God I don't have to deal with her and the kid. It's but if you did knock her up, yeah. would you want to fight for your child? No. Oh, you'd let her go. Oh, I, I would just be yeah. thrilled that Howard K. Stern <laughs> would want to raise it. Just I please. think if, if I knew that my flesh and blood was going to come out of that mess of a person, I think I might want to save it from her, you know? Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, because that's, again, that's that whole Robert Blake thing. He wanted to save the girl from this woman mm -hmm. who he thought would be a terrible mother. I'm not saying what he did to do that. I just know that he had a problem with who was raising his daughter. <laughs> A judge has we know what he ordered, did to do it. <laughs> a judge has ordered O.J. Simpson to hold off spending that money he got for the aborted book, if I did Look it, out. at least for now. The book is allegedly a hypothetical look at how Simpson would have killed his ex-wife, uh, Nicole Simpson, and her friend Ron Goldman. Wednesday's ruling broadens a restraining order sought by the father of Ron Goldman and marks the newest twist in the ongoing fight over money O.J. made. I plead the fifth. Um, NASA <laughs> officials have started to examine the astronaut Lisa Nowak at the uh, Space Center in Houston. She was immediately taken there after making bail. They want to find out what's wrong with her. When an astronaut does something crazy, they think there must be something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to examine her mm. to see exactly what it was, and they're going to go through her previous examinations to see if there were any indications that something like this was up. Could you imagine you're too nuts to go to the moon. <laughs> I say let's send her to the moon. <laughs> nope, she is grounded. Yeah, now they don't right want to send now. her. Uh, they say now that uh, they are going to also conduct two reviews of their psychological and medical care for the men and women who go into space to make sure that they don't have anything like this happen again. They want to stay on top right. of things and make sure that they're assisting astronauts who are in this highly pressurized environment to make sure they don't all uh, start chasing people down wearing diapers as they drive. By the way, Howard TV is uh, putting together right now, Robin, in an emergency effort, a Benji cam <laughs> that should air tonight. It'll be all oh, Benji. Wonderful. It'll be just, you could just log on, not log on, but, you know, whatever, to turn your TV on and just watch Benji. <laughs> And uh, you can you can just sit with it for ten minutes, two minutes, whatever you want, an However hour. However long you think you can. Right. Boy, I really got Fred. No, Fred. That's what Fred sees every day. Oh my God! But now it's funny. I mean, the when it's on TV, it's you know, funny. What, what are the chances that your coworker uh, that works a foot from you is in the top ten percent grossest people on the planet? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not true, is it? I mean, I love the guy. I really do. I think he's funny. He's great, but he's, he's just... He's extraordinarily disgusting. <laughs> 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 now, you know what I mean? I mean, you just, I mean the sweaty, I the blotchy, the... <laughs> hey, Benji, you know what he means. <laughs> no, Lisa G, swear to God, told me that I'm considered one of the best-looking guys on the show. Yeah, okay. And if she talked to him, was If you lost that. weight, you probably would be... T I, I agree, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, sure you do. Yeah. <laughs> Here's NASA's Shanna Dale. NASA will review astronaut screening procedures. Procedures number three. Lisa G went legally blind yeah. three years ago. That's why she wears those thick glasses. That's why she's got that dog. That's right. What is this? Number three. It's a NASA person uh, saying that. Initiate. Uh, yeah, that uh, she's. They're going to start uh, examining these people. Closer. A review of existing psychological screening for admittance into the astronaut. Uh, yeah, good idea. 
And here she jokes about uh, Lisa Nowak. Uh, You'd have to be nuts to go into space. Oh, be... stop. Don't say that. I think everyone who goes into space is nuts. So what? daring, not nuts. Nuts. <laughs> I don't go anywhere. I evil Knievel. Evil Knievel there was daring. Right. He no, wasn't that nuts. was nuts. <laughs> That's nuts, too. Uh, here's uh, uh, Shanna saying that Nowak won't hurt NASA. I do not anticipate uh, long-term consequences from that. People don't have survival instinct. I, I like to survive. I, I lock myself in my room. Right. Nothing can happen they to me. They have ultimate belief in uh, themselves. I don't. Uh, whatever I have is the right thing. This is why uh, the Kennedys, uh, they, got these, they got these great lives and they, they die young because they try these fucking daring yeah, things. They, have to fly, they, have to, they can't fly in a plane to fly in a kite right. over, uh, with, 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 with the skis on. And the other one, right, exactly. And the, 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 other one can't, the other one can't just ski, he's got to play football while he's skiing. Yeah, 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 it's too boring skiing. <laughs> Pass me the ball. <laughs> I mean, if I... I will throw the ball here. But aren't our lives enriched? Era. Era, I'm open. Era, splat. Era, I'm uh, I'm era open. Hit me with an era button, era hook. Era, era, uh, a uh, hut. Uh, stat statue of Era Liberty Play. <laughs> I'm running a 21 era sweep. Our lives enriched by yes. the fact that people will take the Absolutely. Let me tell you something. something. you got to be a little nuts. That's if I was it. JFK Jr., they'd be like, you want to learn how to fly? No, I haven't stopped fucking since <laughs> I was 15. Yeah, guess what? I, uh, when I go on a commercial flight, every girl on the plane wants to fuck right. me. Why would I fly my own plane? And I don't want to fly anywhere. I, I, no. I, since I'm 15, I've been in the Waldorf story of fucking. I just fucked 14 girls, <laughs> Italian girls, on a flight to Italy. Yeah. Why do I want to fly my own plane? Uh, I don't want to need to get on a Cessna. Yeah. Well, here are Lisa Nowak's neighbors who say they're shocked hey by this latest behavior. Era. Lisa is just the sweetest person. I can't even imagine that she would be capable of that. So I'm shocked. So, so there, there you go. go. I'm uh, Era post pattern. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Let's ice skate. Let's 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 uh, ski and play football right. at the same time. <laughs> because skiing isn't a tough enough sport. Meanwhile. Let's play tennis and light ourselves on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Civilians let's, will soon be going into space. Let's party. play tennis while we're covered in gasoline, trying to light a cigarette. <laughs> Do you think you would actually go into space if they start allowing civilians? If they Declared it safe enough. Honey, I, I don't know. Anywhere. No. If my liver no. had like two months, maybe I'd no. go. No, I would never, never, ever go into space. No. I have no desire to be in space. I have no desire to be in, 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 in like another state in this United States. I'm one of these cynics who still doesn't mm. believe we ever went to fucking space. I believe wherever you're born, you should just stay there. Stop. You can't even around. leave the country? No, you can't even leave your house. <laughs> no. Just stay home and unless, leave everyone alone. Unless it's Milwaukee. Right. And you can leave. No, really, I mean, just stay. I mean, everyone would be traveling and adventure. Just calm down. And people have to go into space. You know what, though, Howard? Here's the argument, though. You'd like to travel, private jet, you go away. Do you th if that went down one day, would you be a guy going, why is it a private jet? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous. I, I mean, why? why well, you do anywhere? it, though. I don't, don't want to do I want to stay home. <laughs> I don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> Not looking Civilian to go anywhere. space flight could be a reality before the end of next year. I'm never bored. A California firm, Benson never? Space Company, well, you're with yourself. That's why you're, you're... has announced that it will take civilian Brian Emmett into space in late 2008. And Emmett says he's looking forward to the ride. Two one. People people travel because they're bored. They don't. Look at... No. Why, why do you have to be bored? Why couldn't you just like no. it and want to see something new? See something. You want to see great things? It's right here in this country. Oh please! This country's full of crap. Oh and boy, honey, take that back. Different places. How no. dare you? You go to Europe, they show you 20 bridges. You Here we go assholes. with the bridges we got the story fucking again. Bridge. We There's got many more things than bridges. The Verrazano Bridge is the most beautiful bridge I ever saw. Oh, stop I it. I got to go to Europe to see a bridge. It's, it hasn't been there for 500 years. Uh, look at Lloyd Bridges. That's what I want. Yeah. By the way, Benji's tits jiggle when he writes. Oh, that's, that's, that's how now you can is. see what his body's doing when he writes. Yeah. Now I know what his balls are doing when he writes. <laughs> Here's Brian uh, Emmett. <laughs> All right, Brian Emmett, and two he's one. two one, and he's going to tell us. He's everything. going into space. Oh, he's going in space. He's a civilian. Well, I'm obviously excited go. just to be able to take Good the flight. Go. I mean, to experience. Yeah, and way then when the, when the ship blows up, I don't want to hear you crying. <laughs>
<laughs> like that, the, those, the, the teacher, the woman, just kids. She's up in space. Krista McCullough. Our children that would deny the mother. That was a good idea. The spacecraft that will carry Emmett aloft will make what is called a suborbital flight. I have a dream. I have to be in space. Honey, be right here. You got your dream. You got two children. Today, I, today I'm going to uh, rack golf with an M80 shoved up my head. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you're saying when people have children, they should stop living. Absolutely. And never make any decision that's contrary to what would be best for those children. Right, Robin. Well, you haven't lived that way. I have a different kind of life. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about for a woman. A, mo a child needs its mother, doesn't need a father. Uh, that's not true. I got another report I'll talk to you about in a moment. All right. Owner Jim Benson says that uh, they will go 65 miles up, high enough to give a civilian space traveler <laughs> a ride of about 10 right. minutes long with about three minutes of weightlessness. Benson calls his new spacecraft the Dream Chaser. I'm going to drive over a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to uh, uh, drive over a wet bridge with a whore. I'm going to get completely drunk with a girl, drive over a bridge and see who, uh, who can stay underwater longer. What a shameful. <laughs> we play football and er, 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 my wife throws knives at me. <laughs> What else, Robin? Meanwhile, there will be a spacewalk today, so oh, NASA good. will be concentrating on real <laughs> space business Ooh. today. Ooh. <laughs> Poor adolescents <laughs> whose fathers stay involved in their lives face a much better future. Of course. For you who says a father no, doesn't I'm count. I'm saying a father does count and he should behave himself. A new study by Boston College says the children are less likely to drink, use drugs, or be violent if their dads stay involved in their upbringing. Of course. The study followed 647 you youths do. between the ages of... 10 and 14 over the course of 16 months. The researchers looked primarily at black and Hispanic families getting information from the children and their mothers. Nearly all of the families lived in poverty. All right, Robin. So dads are important. Of course, I know that. Anything else, Robin? 11 and 12 year old girls in Illinois could soon be required to have the HPV shot. That will be to get rid of their uh, cysts on their uh, vagina. The human papilloma, papilloma or papilloma virus, whatever it is. That gets rid of their uh, pussy warts. Mm. <laughs> 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 I may be so technical. And prevent. I uh, era hate pussy warts. Them from getting. <laughs> <laughs> I am against <laughs> pussy warts. <laughs> I, I'll from... drown you if you have pussy warts. That would be my cause if I was a Kennedy. I'm I'm coming out against pussy warts. I think it's papilloma virus. But you anyway, mean pussy uh, warts? <laughs> they will. <laughs> Not get a certain kind of cancer either, as a result, because that virus does cause cancer. You may run pussy cancer. Uh, if your pussy gets warts, it will turn to pussy cancer. <laughs> some parents are a little concerned, and there are some religious Plot cancer who don't want young girls, girls of the ages of 11 and 12, getting this virus. And I mean, uh, cancer of the pussy. <laughs> Will you two stop? I'm trying to have a serious conversation here. You're talking about pussy vaccine. Hey, uh, the seriousness <laughs> went out the window when Benji showed his nuts. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, I told uh, my, my kids, uh, if you get pussy cancer, I'll get you a <laughs> pussy transplant. <laughs> I'm getting you a black market pussy. <laughs> Listen to me. There yes. are some who don't think it's right to give an 11 or 12 year old girl a vaccine that will prevent them from getting the virus because they say that might encourage them to have sex. Right. People who are for this say that you have to give it to an 11 or 12 year old because you have to introduce the vaccine before they've been introduced to the virus. I never thought we'd see the day where there'd be no more pussy warts. I think it's a good thing. <laughs> I, I really do. And you know what? I, I do know women who have gotten warts and they do. They get uh, cancer of the uterus. Well, then this is very important. Yeah, so this is it's very important. cervix, Howard. They get cancer Whatever. One of those things. <laughs> One of, the, of those things inside there. Of the there. lips. <laughs> That's not the lips. Ever, you will vaccinate 11 year old pussy. I'm a senator. I'll make sure. In seven years, I'll be doing them. But I don't know what we're doing about it here. I, you know, I haven't heard anything about girls in New York getting this virus uh, or this vaccine either. Uh, you have to give it early so that they haven't been exposed to it before uh, they get the vaccine. And also, the people who are for this say, I can't believe that people are linking the shot to sex and not to cancer. You're trying to prevent cancer. Remember when we used to have naked women on the show? Mm. Now, now we, we got naked, a naked Benji. You know, oh. Naked writer. The naked writer. <laughs> naked yeah, you know what, writer. The, 
Play, Playboy and Playgirl have never done a comedy writer issue. <laughs> <laughs> Robin, is there anything else? Remember we were talking about Ted Haggard yesterday? He is the minister who had to step down as the head of his church because of the exposure that he was having uh, homosexual relations, drug-fueled homosexual relations with a man. He's a fag. In his community, a male prostitute. Well, now the details of the agreement worked out between between him and his church have been revealed. Hey -oh. Hey -oh. Haggard was removed as the leader of the New Life Church after the allegations surfaced. The agreement says Haggard cannot rejoin the New Life congregation as a minister, even though he has declared himself completely heterosexual now. And he and his family have to leave Colorado Springs. They don't even want him in the town. Unbelievable. He can also not speak publicly about the scandal. There is also a financial component to the deal, but nobody is disclosing how much money Haggard is getting to go away. Hmm. So they just want him out of there. They don't want to see him. They don't want to know him. Well, it's ironic. I mean, for years this guy's been preaching homophobia, and now his congregation is practicing it on him. <laughs> so great. He was a good teacher. Yeah, you got him. They're drumming you out of town, dude. <laughs> a California woman wants airports to clarify their rules concerning carrying on liquids after airport security forced her to throw away her breast milk before she boarded a plane. <laughs> I told you, I saw a woman who had six bottles of breast milk with her because she had pumped her breast and for whatever reason before she came to the airport. And they stood there and made her open each bottle and taste it. Oh, it's disgusting. So she had to drink her own breast oh, milk. Oh, for crying out loud. Really, have you ever seen breast milk in a bottle? It's vile. It oh, is. yeah? Because yeah, it's like almost like watery. It's oh, like, it is? Yeah. I was going to say, it's uh, it's not thicker, it's, no, it's thinner. Just, I, I'm against that. I'm against women pumping their breasts into bottles. <laughs> really? I honestly am. I mean, it's just, it's too much for me. I can't look at it. A California, this California woman uh, said that she was on a one-day business trip. Prior to her return, she used a breast pump to extract breast milk so she could take it back to her nine-month-old son. She placed the milk in the required three-ounce bottle in a Ziploc bag but was forced to throw it away anyway because she didn't have her child with her. I give you chits to carry your breast milk in. But if you're away from your child on business for a couple of days, don't you have to keep the breast milk Yeah, you flowing? pump it. You just pump it in. You pump it out, and that's it. Why, why should you throw it away? No. It's good milk. No. <laughs> Anything else, Robin? Do you think people shouldn't be able to listen to their iPods or yes. talk on a cell phone as they walk? Yes. First of all, we've turned into a nation of babies. No one can stand to be on their own. They, they, they can't stand it. They can't even walk on their own without their companion playing in their heads. And it's dangerous. Then when they walk into the street because they can't hear anything, they sue you for hitting them with your car. And they're absolutely for it. No more, uh, no more walking Senator, around with that. Here in New York wants people who listen to iPods or use cell phones as they cross city streets to be ticketed. Right. I want to uh, listen to my iPod while I walk. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Everyone's playing. No one can do one thing. Well, I'm guilty of this. I love it. But I'll tell you what. You cannot hear a goddamn no. thing. That's in right. mid In midtown yeah. Manhattan, yeah. It's like, you know, rush hour. Yeah, and, then, and then you walk into the street and get hit by a car, and then it's everybody else's it's fault. It's happened a few times. Of course. Senator Carl Kruger says he wants people to take off their headphones and get off their cell phones and pay attention to traffic right. so they don't get hit. He says he came up with the proposed bill after two pedestrians were killed in Brooklyn while wearing headphones. The uh, senator wants New Yorkers caught wearing headphones or using any handheld electronic device crossing city streets to be fined $100. Oh, there's people, it's even worse, who text message with their eyes on that fucking Blackberry uh, just walking While they're down driving. The yeah, well, driving and walking just head right. down. I uh, sometimes wonder what people are doing with their children when you read a story like this. In Minnesota, they're trying to figure out if they should charge four teenagers who ran into a nursing home and randomly threw water on the residents. <laughs> It's they probably just, uh, the new Jackass movie they're shooting. <laughs> they just ran into different old people's rooms and threw water on them, either from a glass or a pitcher. 
and they just doused them with water. After one of the incidents, police chased the boys as they ran from the hospital, but lost sight of them when they ran into a nearby forest. Every yeah, those boys need to play football while they ski. <laughs> Another time, a nursing home staff member got a license plate number from a getaway car. The teens were questioned by police last week and reportedly said they got the idea from a movie. All right. But they couldn't remember the name of the film. I think it was Beer, Beer League. <laughs> yeah, we did. We did that actually. That's the, some of the extras on the DVD had that. Anything else, so, Robin? Yeah, I, I mean, what do you do with kids who throw water? I, isn't it bad enough that people have gotten old now? They're being doused by. It's these shameful. Teams. Shameful. It really, they should is. immediately be made old. Yeah, people, people are shameful. Senator Hillary Clinton, she's out campaigning. Campaigning hard. She now says Congress has done little to end the Iraq war, number one. Well, she's right. She's absolutely right. While our troops have stood valiantly on the front lines, the Congress has stood on the sidelines. Well, there you go. So uh, she has declared that she will end the war if you make her president. Hillary's dick was massive and had obviously been pretty once. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Rob? Here's the Deputy Attorney General Paul McNulty. He says crooked soldiers took millions from the reconstruction funds. You know, I told you about the well, $4 billion dollars in cash they took over there. Number These two. individuals, including three military reserve officers, army colonels and lieutenant colonels, who were placed in positions of trust, used the CPA funds as their own personal ATM machines. But if somebody put four billion dollars in front of you in cash with no paper trail, mm. what I would, would not, you do? I would never do that. I couldn't sleep at night. You couldn't expect everybody to have that conscience, well, though. No, I'm just telling you. Ask me what I would do. I said I wouldn't do a thing. But would you put four billion dollars in cash in a room in front of everybody? No, no, Thank I wouldn't. You. I would not. They've come up with an over-the-counter diet pill. It'll be a prescription drug that you used to have a doctor write a prescription for in a lesser dose. They'll soon be selling it right over the counter. But Dr. Charles Gainley says don't think of this as a magic pill. In order to lose weight, you're still going to have to combine this diet with exercise. We'll get six. that pill down here because we've got a nude, hairy, <laughs> pimply <laughs> bee sitting in there. We need an emergency supply. Oh, which one is this? Number six. Number six, okay. This drug uh, is uh, only going to be effective if it's used in conjunction with a weight loss program. The pill oh, great. will <laughs> block fat. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you take the pill, but you still got to be on a weight loss program. <laughs> well, if I could be on a weight loss program, what do I need a pill for? It's supposed to help. All right. And finally, Survivor will be starting up again. Oh, I can't wait. Tonight, right? I guess so. You I think I should get involved this. or should I get off that show? It takes up so much time. It's up to you. I, you seem to still enjoy it. They have some new twists coming up this season. I want to be free of it. Here's Jeff Probst to tell us about him. Number nine. I get sucked into that Survivor and I'm in front of that <laughs> damn TV every minute. Uh, Jeff Probst got something to say? In, in the past, we've always had the, the hidden immunity idol hidden on Exile Island. This time, what they'll find when they get there is the first note, the first clue will tell them it's not on Exile Island, it's back at your camp. Ooh. Oh. Wow. You know what? I'm not tuning in. <laughs> that just turned me off. I'm sick of it. He says there will be deadly snakes on Exile Island. Oh, that's so. good. I hope someone dies. Oh, we're that good. I, I love doing anything with deadly snakes. <laughs> <laughs> Any sport. Mm. And that's what's happening. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Naked Benji. And uh, <laughs> let me just mention that... Uh, oh, there's a couple of things I have to mention. First of all, uh, we are looking for Miss Black Howard Stern. Highly controversial. I wonder if Ms. Howard Stern got home all right. Yeah, I, I wonder about that, too. I was worried all day. <laughs> I hope Ms. Black Howard Stern... <laughs> I don't know. Is that sponsored by Clips for Sale? It is. Yeah, yes, it I, is. I, I don't have. I, I, I mean, it's just making, they're making me nuts with these little 10 second things that I agreed to do. I, I made a mistake. I can't find it. Miss Black Howard Stern is sponsored by ClipsForSale.com. That's it. <laughs>